How the Victorians Mourn Children The Victorian era, which lasted from 1837 to 1901, was characterised by a fascination with death and mourning rituals. This was due to a number of factors, including high mortality rates from diseases such as tuberculosis and cholera, as well as the impact of Queen Victoria's own mourning period after the death of her husband, Prince Albert. Please continue to support my channel by subscribing. Victorian attitudes towards death were heavily influenced by religious beliefs, particularly in the Christian belief in the afterlife and the idea of judgement and salvation. Death was seen as a transition from this life to the next, and the ritual of mourning was seen as a way to show respect for the deceased and to help the living come to terms with their loss. The Victorians developed elaborate mourning customs, including wearing black clothing and jewellery, covering mirrors and displaying photographs of the deceased. These customs were seen as a way to show respect for the dead and to demonstrate the importance of family and community. In addition to the religious and cultural factors, the Victorians were also influenced by the emerging field of psychology and the idea of the good death. This idea held that death should be peaceful and dignified and that the dying person should be surrounded by loved ones and comforted in their final moments. Victorian culture was also marked by a fascination with the supernatural as evidenced by the popularity of gothic literature and the proliferation of ghost stories and seances. This interest in the supernatural may have been a way for the Victorians to cope with the uncertainty and fear that accompanied death and mortality. Furthermore, the Victorians' preoccupation with death was reflected in their art and fashion. For example, Victorian mourning jewellery. Victorian mourning jewellery often featured hair from the deceased and was designed to be worn as a symbol of grief. In architecture, cemeteries and mausoleums were often grand and elaborate, reflecting the belief that death was a solemn and important event. The Victorians also had a particular fascination with death and mourning when it came to children. Childhood mortality rates were high during this period, and the death of a child was seen as a particularly tragic event. This led to the development of specific mourning customs and symbols related to children such as the use of white clothing instead of black. The Victorians' obsession with death and mourning was not limited to the upper classes, but was also reflected in working class culture. For example, wakes and funeral processions were important events in many working class communities, and the use of black clothing and mourning rituals was common among people of all social classes. What were the specific mourning customs and symbols related to children? During the Victorian era, childhood mortality rates were high and the death of a child was seen as particularly tragic. As a result, there were specific mourning customs and symbols related to children. Some of these customs and symbols included White clothing While black clothing was the standard mourning attire for adults, white clothing was often worn by children's parents and siblings as a symbol of innocence and purity. In some cases, the child's clothing or coffin would also be white. It was particularly appropriate for children who had not yet had the opportunity to experience the world's corruption. White clothing was often made from lightweight fabric such as cotton or linen and was typically embellished with lace or other decorative elements. The white mourning attire would often be worn by both male and female mourners and they would also wear white gloves, veils and armbands. In some cases, the entire funeral procession would be dressed in white, including the pool bearers who would carry a white coffin or casket. The hearse may be decorated with white flowers, ribbons or other white symbols of mourning. The period of wearing white clothing for mourning varied, but it was usually shorter than the period for wearing black. For children, the period of mourning was often much longer and could last for several years. 
Overall, wearing white clothing for mourning was seen as a way to express a different type of grief, one that acknowledged the innocence and purity of the deceased, particularly children. It was also an opportunity for mourners to stand out from the usual black-clad mourners and to express their individuality in the mourning process. Lockets and bracelets. Lockets and bracelets containing a lock of the child's hair or a photograph were popular mourning jewellery for parents and close family members. These items served as a way to keep the child's memory close and were often worn for the rest of the wearer's life. Lockets were typically made of gold or silver and were designed to hold a small photograph or a lock of the deceased's hair. Some lockets were also designed to hold a small piece of fabric or a flower from the funeral. These lockets were often worn on a chain or ribbon around the neck or pinned to clothing. Bracelets, on the other hand, were often made of black jet or woven hair and were designed to be worn on the wrist. Like lockets, they were often contained a photograph or a lock of hair from the deceased. Mourning jewellery was typically worn for a specific period of time after the death of a loved one and the length of time varied depending on the individual's relationship to the deceased and their social status. In some cases, mourning jewellery was worn for the rest of the wearer's life as a way to keep the memory of their loved one close. Mourning jewellery was not limited to lockets and bracelets and other types of jewellery such as brooches and earrings were also popular during the Victorian era. These pieces of jewellery often featured symbols of mourning, such as a weeping willow or an angel, and were designed to be worn as a symbol of grief and remembrance. Overall, mourning jewellery played an important role in Victorian mourning customs, providing a way for the bereaved to keep the memory of their loved ones close and to demonstrate their grief to their wider community. Today, mourning jewellery is a valuable collector's item and serves as a reminder of the importance of remembering and honouring the memory of the deceased. Angels and Cherubs Angels and cherubs were popular symbols in Victorian mourning art and were often used to represent the deceased as they transitioned to the afterlife. These symbols were believed to offer comfort to the bereaved and to provide a sense of hope and reassurance that the deceased was now in a better place. Angels were depicted in a variety of forms, including winged beings, trumpeters and guardians. They were often shown holding the deceased hand or guiding them towards the gates of heaven. In some cases, angels were depicted as mourning alongside the living, serving as a reminder that death was a universal experience. Cherubs, on the other hand, were typically depicted as plump, childlike figures with wings. They were often shown holding a symbol of mourning, such as a broken flower or a weeping willow branch. Cherubs were seen as a symbol of innocence and purity, and they were often used to represent the deceased child. Both angels and cherubs were popular motifs in Victorian mourning art, and were used in a variety of mediums including clothing, jewellery and sculpture. Mourning jewellery featuring angels and cherubs was particularly popular, with lockets and brooches often featuring these symbols. In addition, Victorian cemeteries were often decorated with angel and cherub sculptures, serving as a reminder of the hope and comfort that these symbols offered to the bereaved. Toys and Dolls during the Victorian era, it was not uncommon for parents to commission or create a doll or toy in the likeness of their deceased child. These dolls were often dressed in the child's clothing and were meant to serve as a reminder of the child's life and personality. They were also used as a way to cope with grief and to keep the child's memory alive. These dolls, known as mourning dolls, were typically made from materials such as wax, porcelain or cloth. They were often dressed in white or black clothing and sometimes they were even made to look like the deceased child with a lock of their hair or a photograph incorporated into the doll's design. Mourning dolls were not limited to the upper classes 
and they were also popular among working class families. In some cases, parents would create the dolls themselves, using materials that were readily available to them. In addition to mourning dolls, other toys and objects were also used to remember deceased children. For example, some families would commission a portrait of the child, while others would create a small memorial in their home or garden. Overall, the use of toys and dolls as a way to remember deceased children during the Victorian era reflected the belief that childhood was a time of innocence and purity. These objects served as a way to keep the child's memory close and to provide comfort to the grieving family. Today, mourning dolls and other objects related to Victorian mourning customs are valuable historical artefacts that offer a glimpse into the era's attitudes towards death and mourning. Child-sized coffins During the Victorian era, child-sized coffins were commonly used for the burial of children. These coffins were smaller than adult size and were typically made from wood or metal depending on the family's financial means. The child-sized coffins were often decorated with white ribbons, flowers or other symbols of mourning. Sometimes a family would include the child's favourite toy or other personal items in the coffin as a way to remember them. The use of child-sized coffins reflected the Victorian belief that children were innocent and pure and that their death was particularly tragic. It was also seen as a way to provide a sense of closure for the family and to honour the child's memory. Child-sized coffins were not limited to the upper classes and they were used by families of all social classes. In some cases, families who could not afford a coffin would make one themselves using whatever materials were readily available for them. Overall, the mourning customs and symbols related to children during the Victorian era were meant to honour the child's memory and to provide comfort to the grieving family. They reflected the belief that childhood was a time of innocence and purity and that the death of a child was a particularly tragic event. Please continue to support my channel by subscribing. Please comment, like and subscribe if you wish for more stories and leave your suggestions below and I will endeavour to cover them.